Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It is time to have a look at the dev server once again. The VBCI is on it, which is a new French light tank, and even though it is absolutely massive and looks completely ridiculous in terms of its proportions, it is still pretty light at only 25 tons. This vehicle is uh, not the first VBCI that we've had in the game though. Um, you do have the VBCI 2 MCT30, uh, which was a premium that was added a little bit ago, but the vehicles are fundamentally different and also different BRs because of it. The VBCI 2 MCT30 has a 30mm Bushmaster 2 Mark 44. It also has this funny 50 cal weapon system that's on the top of it, uh, whereas if you have a look at the standard VBCI, the turret is way smaller, and also it has access to the 25mm Orlikon KBA BO2. Now for me, I actually kind of prefer this gun over the other uh, one, the Bushmaster, because its fire rate is a lot faster, and it's much better at multi-role instead of the Bushmaster, which is way more just kind of standardized in tank killing. So you're more reliant on the penetration, whereas with the 25mm Orlikon KBA BO2, because of the fire rate, you can go after helicopters, you can go after planes, you can go after light vehicles. It works a lot better for at least the play style that I personally like. That's why um, I've really enjoyed other vehicles that are similar BR to this thing. Uh, for example, you have the uh, VBC PT2, uh, which has a very similar setup to the VBCI at 9.3, and that one is really fun. So there's no reason why this one won't be either. With 400 rounds for the 25mm, you have access to the PMB090. This is an APFSDS round, which, when it penetrates the target, will do enough damage to cripple it, and then you can finish it off with, once again, the high fire rate, just going through over and over and over and over again, and having a bit of fun. It does, unfortunately, have a bit of a problem with penetration until you get to that round. The default only has one APDS, which pens 80 millimeters, and then you have the M791 rounds, which you unlock at rank one, but they're still not really good enough to be able to justify the things BR. But once you get this APFSDS, you'll understand why it's there. It also has a lot of other factors that are really nice. The LWSLR is really good, especially against a lot of CAS elements of this BR. Smoke grenades for repositioning. Obviously, the engine power is good too, but other things such as the thermals are quite good for it. So you've got to remember, even though this vehicle is massive, it can be used as a scout. So <laughs> that means that thermals can help you track targets pretty much all over the place, which I feel is pretty good for the vehicle. Now, uh, talking about survivability, since this thing is huge and can't really take a shot, like it's only got 36 millimeters of armor on the side, it's only got, you know, 70, uh, sorry, 83 millimeters on the front, which I know sounds like a lot, but even against auto cannons at this BR, they're going to go, go through this. And then you have 52 millimeters here. The turret will get easily penned. Like the getting shot is the problem. You actually do have ways of surviving. You technically have a protection system here. Uh, it's very similar to the Brennus one, whether it works or not against what it needs to. Uh, we'll have to see going forward. Uh, the other part of it is the smoke grenades, and it actually has a really interesting, unique setup for the smoke grenades. It has two on the back of the turret here in sets of two. You got another one which is sat here, another one on the front of the turret, and then you have sets on the booty. So you actually have three either side meaning that the crew that can come out the back or the infantry that comes out the back can survive, which I actually think is really cool. You don't usually see that on these uh, types of vehicles. Now, when it comes to the crew, there's uh, three people. You've got a driver, you've got a commander, and you've got a gunner. So no matter what happens, the gunner will have to be in that position, and that kind of sucks. So, you know, on stuff like the RDF LT that we looked at earlier, where what you have with the RDFLT is you have two people who are in the hull, and then you have the commander in the top. Well, if the commander gets taken out, your vehicle can still operate in its 100%, and the commander never gets replaced. The two people stay down here, and you get really good survivability. Well, with this, because this is labeled as the gunner instead of the commander, that means that he will be replaced once he gets taken out by the commander. And that means that you have... Not a lot of survivability from that, because people can just shoot your turret twice, 
take out the crew, and then you're dead, and that just sucks. The other thing that's also surprising about this right now, and why I don't think this vehicle is finished, it doesn't have its updated x-ray done, and to be honest, the x-ray kind of looks like it's all over the place, like, pieces are just kind of cobbled together, um, so I would wait to see if they're going to update this, because I'm pretty sure they're going to. The VBCI also joins a lot of other light tanks in this area for France, which are all pretty fun, some better than others when it comes to the spading, but once they are spaded, they're actually quite nice. Apart from this one, this is an abomination, but the Mars 15 is quite good with its APF-SDS, the AMX 10RC is also very good with its thermals and APF-SDS, SK-105 is an amazing vehicle, and then also the Vextra is very fun too. So the VBCI just offers something different. All of these vehicles are larger cannon vehicles, which have APF-SDS, which does a lot of damage. This one is the auto cannon focus and will give you a different playstyle from that area, which is nice. You know, you don't want to just continually play the same types of vehicles over and over and over again. And being a 9.3, you can run it with the Santal, you can run it with the AMX 32 105 and the standard AMX 32, which is great because these vehicles are some which actually work really well in the game. They've just always struggled with um, different kind of like matchups because they don't always have the support that other vehicles have done. But nowadays, with the VBCI, you get a nice uh, light vehicle to run with it. You have the F100D, uh, uh, which has access to the rockets. You also have access to the Etondard, which gets the big old fat uh, AS30 nodes, which you can use. So you have an all-around lineup at this BR, which is great for France because they haven't had that ever in its history and it's something that i've just wanted to see for the longest time and now that it's finally here it's just so much better so really nice to see that also since the vbci2 was a tech was a premium vehicle i've been waiting uh, to see the chassis as a standard tech tree vehicle and that's what we see out of the vbci and that's just fantastic you know that's that's something that can't be um, can't be stressed enough. I don't like it when specific chassis are basically kept away from the standard tech trees, so therefore everybody can't experience it. I think in general it is much better uh, when everybody uh, at least gets access to the feeling of it and then can decide, you know, whether they actually want to purchase a vehicle which has a similar setup on it and with a different gun, which is basically what you're doing here with this type of vehicle. So, great to see, and also... The only problem with this vehicle is the stock grind. And getting to that APF SDS, getting uh, to the place where you feel comfortable with going after enemies that aren't light vehicles, that are actually vehicles that have access, you know, to proper armor, that can be a bit of a problem. So if you have a look at the thermals, I'm pretty sure they're Gen 2, and the fire rate on the gun is great. It basically means that you can use the IRST, which this thing has, and just take on a lot of vehicles in terms of the air. Like, you can just hammer them, which is really cool. And other uh, vehicles that this is great at is helicopters. Because with the APF-SDS, it flies far enough, so you can just kind of do damage to them. It can also destroy MBTs from the side. The only vehicle that you'll actually struggle from the side to kill is the TADUD, because for some reason that has slightly increased armor on the side compared to a lot of other vehicles that you'll face. But you are huge, like you you are a massive vehicle, so you're going to have to just really use the acceleration of this to try and get around the place as best as you can, and then from there, set up in a way so you can just flock stuff from the side and just hit them. But unfortunately, that's not always going to be the case. Like, sometimes you're going to have to deal with stuff from the front, and unfortunately, you're probably just going to die. So with the smoke grenades the way that they are, when you fire them, you actually get 360 degrees coverage. So let's say you're stuck in a bad position, you can smoke up, and then you can get out of there quickly with the transmission and then fight for another day, which I generally think is actually really cool. So that is a big up uh, for this. A lot of the time, um, you know, smoke grenades only fire one way, and for the French, for some reason, what they tend to do is they seem to fire every way. The Leclerc does the same thing, which is really cool. So I'm super happy that this vehicle does the same thing. This is one of my picks for the update, just because it's going to be really fun to fly around with this just huge behemoth. And I know it's going to be enjoyable getting this gun to work once again, even as a second spawn 
where you can use it in the multi-role fashion against Cass and also against other tanks which have overpushed. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontikovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem, Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.